Hi, welcome to the Rittner Floral School in Boston, Mass. I'm Dr. Steve Rittner, and it's a pleasure to welcome you into one of our classrooms today. The time of the year, well, we're approaching Valentine's Day, and the typical question that people think of as they approach this holiday is what to give their loved one. Of course, you never can go wrong with flowers, but sometimes people are thinking in terms of, well, should I maybe change it and give it candy this year, or what else should I give? Well, we've got a solution for you, and I think you guys are really going to find it kind of fun. And you'll see that in front of me, I have a large platter. I have some of the black foam attached in here. I've got some anchor pins underneath, so it's in there fairly solid. I like the use of the black foam because it's a little bit different. And the use of this particular variety of foam means that we don't have to worry about using foliage to cover mechanics. We can actually let the foam pretty much stay like this. It kind of blends into the background. And what we're going to be doing in this design is we're going to show you how flowers can multitask well with other things. You'll notice that I happen to have here an apothecary jar, and it's got candy in it. And there's no reason at all why we can't mix our flowers with our candy. So if somebody would like to give candy to a loved one, they can give candy, they can give a lovely container to the loved one as well, but we can also use flowers to enhance the gift. In other words, flowers multitask so well, we can give them, of course, the dozen roses in a container, but we can also mix roses, other flowers together, and other kinds of gifts together all in one package. And you're going to see how we can do this. So we've got our container ready. We've got uh, our accessory gift ready here as well in terms of the apothecary jar with some of our candy in it. And we're going to mix some things with it. And of course, we're going to start off with one of my favorite flowers. This, of course, is Bells of Ireland. It is an amazing flower. It's available pretty much through the year. Um, these things are pretty much uh, really very, very showy. They're beautiful. The actual flower itself is this little white thing that you see kind of tucked in here. 99% of the biomass here actually happens to be foliage, but we call it the Bells of Ireland flower. And what we're going to do is we're going to start with our Bells of Ireland flower, and we're going to use it to create height in our design. And I'm going to take one piece, and I'm going to place it over here on this side. And notice how tall I'm coming up. I'm really coming up fairly high on my piece because the use of the Bells of Ireland allows that. It gives us a very, very pretty effect. It also is going to allow me to give kind of a, a garden-y kind of effect. In other words, things kind of swoop, swooping and kind of angling off at different sides. And what I'm going to really do is frame my jar that happens to have the candy in it with some of my Bells of Ireland. And notice that by taking it and working it in here, I can come up with a very, very interesting effect very, very quickly. And I'm taking and using the curves coming over there, coming over here slightly to one side. I'm also going to take another piece of Bells of Ireland and work it over onto this side. So I'm really having kind of some fun with the fact that the Bells of Ireland kind of curves and moves in different directions. Now, there's all kinds of options that we have in terms of flowers on this. I'm going to go with a mixed flower option on our design today. And the first flower that I plan to use on this that I think you guys are really going to enjoy, lilies. Now, lilies are not for everybody. I'm using an oriental lily. They have a, a lovely fragrance to them. They're absolutely stunning. Some people like these. Some people don't because the fragrance may be kind of strong. But I think that for somebody who can really appreciate these, they really give a pretty amazing effect. And I'm going to work some of my lilies over here. Just as I started with my Bells of Ireland, I'm working a few lilies on this side. I'm also going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm starting by trimming down some of my lilies. And so just bear with me a moment, my viewer, as I do that. I want to have something that's more of a bud up here. And then I'm also going to take uh, my lily and I'm going to place another one, uh, and I'm going to deliberately place it over slightly behind to give a feeling of depth and dimension. In other words, even though this is a one-sided piece, I'm having a piece behind, so it feels like we're looking through a little bit, as it were. And I'm going to 
mix a few more lilies into our design. I'm going to place one right over here. And notice how these are filling our design so well. I'm going to place another one. And just bear with me, my viewer, as I cut it and put it over here. These designs become very, very quick and easy to do. And that's the whole idea. Remember, our whole philosophy here at Rittner's Floral School is that doing floral designing should be quick, easy, and fun. And that's exactly what we intend to do on this particular presentation. And I'm placing another lily over here. So I have some lilies coming down here, coming over here. Now I do have a blank spot over there, but I'm not too worried about that because I am going to use a few more things in our design besides the lilies and the bells of Ireland. I'm going to, of course, make use of the perennial favorite, the flower that is, has become so well identified with this holiday, and that is, of course, our roses. And so we're going to mix some roses in. Uh, I'm coming, trying to come up with something here that's a little bit different, yet at the same token, my viewer, I don't want to ignore this. This is a perennial favorite. Everybody loves the rose and associates roses with Valentine's Day. But you'll notice, my viewer, that in working with my roses, I'm working them in, but they're not going to be the main attraction. They're going to be part of the mix. In other words, I'm mixing my roses with my lilies to come up with an interesting kind of an effect. Now, I think you can see the implications, my viewer. You can mix all kinds of interesting things together on this design. You can mix roses and lilies or other combinations of materials together on your designing. I'm going to take another, uh, another rose and place it over in here. In other words, I'm just gradually working them in and kind of connecting what I have here. So I've got some roses coming over here. I'm coming down here on this side, working around here. I'm going to place another one over in here. In other words, I'm just gradually, gradually working them so that it kind of connects the whole thing together. And notice, my viewer, I haven't used very many. I've basically taken one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven of my uh, roses to work in and mix them in with my other materials. Now I'd like to mix a few more things into this design. And one of my favorite flowers I'm going to use on this, this is a flower. I don't think I've used them too often in these demonstrations, but I think it's time I do because it's a really cool flower. Uh, ranunculus. It is an absolutely gorgeous flower. They come in so many different colors and of course I'm making use of the pinks on this one today because I think that they work very very well uh, with the uh, Valentine Day theme. And so I'm going to take some of these and I'm going to work them in. This adds to the feeling of this as almost being kind of garden-like and I'm going to work one right over here over onto this side and then Perhaps another one working it over here on this side. I'm trying to work these in so that they kind of blend in with the other materials here. Let's get this one in place and let me just work that in my viewer. So notice we've got one kind of traipsing over here slightly. We've got another one coming over here and I'm going to continue the process uh, over on to the other side as well. I'm going to work a ranunculus right over here. So we have one kind of mixed in over on this side. And then let's take another one and get it over in here. In other words, I'm kind of connecting around on both sides. That's the beauty of this because we're really trying to work something that feels almost like natural growth as it were yet at the same time is kind of working around and through with our little apothecary jar. And flowers can be an outstanding way of really complementing other kinds of materials. They work well with just about everything. I am going to also work some of our, of our ranunculus in towards the middle. And so let me just get one right over here, just kind of peeking through right here. And then I'm going to work another one. Let me just cut this down a little bit more right over here. Notice, my viewer, how the use of the black foam 
it kind of recedes into the background. You hardly even notice it after a while, and this is working so well. I could stop at this point if I wanted to, but wait, there's more. We can also add other materials to it. I've got a few mini carnations, and so I'm going to add a few miniature carnations to my mix. And again, I'm working some right in here. Never discount miniature carnations. Miniature carnations are good keepers. They come in a whole slew of different colors. And again, I am staying pretty close today to my uh, pinks because the pinks, the reds, they are working very, very nicely together for me. So notice I've got something coming over here and down over here. I'm going to do a similar thing on the other side, placing another mini carnation over here, just gradually, gradually filling in. So it looks like we have a nice mixture of different things. I think that sometimes having mixtures of different kinds of materials really gives a, a little bit more of an interest to our designing rather than just one thing. I think that it's all good and fine to have the dozen roses or whatever, but I think that mixtures of flowers visually, I think, are a lot more interesting to look at, interesting to play with, and you can come up with some really cool effects. Now I could stop at this point. I do have a few more fragments of Bells of Ireland that I could also use. In other words, I can take this and place this over here onto this side. In other words, bring a little bit more of my Bells of Ireland out just to create a little bit more of a frame over here as well as over here. And we've got a pretty nice looking design. What do you think, my viewer? It's quick, easy, and fun, the Rittner Floral School way. Now I'd like to show you another few options on this because this design, the way it stands now, holds very, very nicely. Different options, I could raise this up a little bit if I wanted to. I like it kind of here in between all of my flowers that almost feel like they're naturally growing amongst it. I could stop at that point if I wanted to. There's another option that I'm going to show you that I think you might find kind of interesting. I'm going to take part of this design apart right now. I'm going to take this section out and I want you to see what I do here, my viewer, because what I'm going to do is come up with another variation that I think you might find interesting. Instead of having this worked so that I am surrounding my jar, what I could also do, there's an, in a different kind of an option, would be perhaps to do this. And just bear with me, my viewer, as I do it. I'm going to take my Bells of Ireland and I'm going to come out slightly over on this side. And I'm going to take some of my ranunculus, place it out as well over here. And then I'm going to trim uh, a little bit on my flower on my rose and bring this over here. In other words, I have another option that I could play with on this. Instead of raising it quite as high as I did on the right or left, let me show you my viewer. What I've done is I've taken this, taken this down here and then extended it out onto this side. So in other words, by doing it this way, I can also continue to accentuate my jar, if you don't like the effect of the jar in between things, if it feels a little too constraining for you, you can take it and work it kind of working around coming off like this. It gives a very, very pretty design, a big design, and it works very, very well in that context too. Now one other thing that I would mention is that we're showing this to feature uh, our candy as well as our flowers. The person getting this is going to be overjoyed because she's not only getting beautiful flowers, but she's also getting some candy that she can eat as well and enjoy it and so forth. But this also works well with other things. In other words, I'm showing this in this context, but we could if we wanted to, if we didn't want to feature candy, this also works very, very well with, for example, a stuffed animal we could work a stuffed animal in here and that would give another different thing. So the person would get beautiful flowers and then a keepsake in terms of a little friend that can be with her and part of her collection and so forth. You may wonder, uh, how would I work this? If I were going to do something like this, more likely I would also 
take a little piece of styrofoam, put a little bit of moss on it, place it here in between, in between my uh, flowers so that in that way my little friend is not going to get a wet bottom. And then I would attach my little friend right in here onto the base like so, so that in that way he wouldn't be getting wet where we have foam around it in the container. That's how I would do that. But I wanted you to see, my viewer, this as another possible option because it is a nice way of doing it. So we have here, if you think of it, really an interesting kind of design. We're featuring our flowers and we're featuring our candy, but it also could be adapted to stuffed animals or other things as well. What do you think, my viewer? Quick, easy, and fun. The Rittner Floral School way. I hope you've enjoyed this brief demonstration. Uh, please come and watch more of our videos. We're constantly putting them up. Uh, again, if you need to contact us, our website is www.floralschool.com. On behalf of all of us here at Rittner's Floral School, I'm Dr. Steve Rittner. We thank you for coming in and visiting with us today.